today we're talking about positive ANA. What does positive ANA mean? Uh, what does 1 over 40, 1 over 80, 1 over 6, 160, uh, more 1 over 320? What does speckled? What does homogeneous? What does all of this mean? Okay. We're going to talk about this at the end of those 10 minutes. If you have questions, please let me know. And then otherwise, uh, normally, you should, uh, you should know a lot and you should be reassured, okay? So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try uh, to explain to you in very simple words. Uh, so bear with me. Hopefully, I can explain it very nicely. All right. So the first thing is that for when, like, our body is in balance and to not perish of infection that are ongoing, that are going on all of the time, because we are literally not in a sterile environment, which is good, by the way. We have in our body an immune system that recognizes that we are made of self, like things that are our own, and then other things that should not be here. So, for example, I believe that every eight second or eight minutes, I can't remember, but it's like a huge amount of time, we make cancer cells. And our body the immune system recognizes those cancer cells and can say, okay, you're not supposed to be there, out, okay? So that is the, the immune system doing its thing. We want that, that's great. The issue is that sometimes um, it can recognize your immune, like your immune system recognizes things as not their own, even though it's your own, right? So it's basically going to be triggered by your own body as if it needed to be getting uh, getting rid of that. And so uh, ANA is an auto-antibody. Auto means self. So it's made of our own, like our own body thing, an antibody. And an antibody is basically what, you know, it's, it's I, oh, we always show it like this because it's basically a receptor because we have to, like, usually it sees a little uh, signal, it goes on that little signal, and then it's going to, that, that the disassociation is going to get uh, into um, a, a cascade of events that are usually pro-inflammatory to get rid of the that little signal that it found, okay? So think of it as there is an infection, we recognize, well, everyone knows the infection of COVID, right? So you remember like how they were showing them with spike and at the top they had like this little uh, round thing. Well, the receptor is going to see this and uh, this is the antibody that's seeing the, the, uh, the receptor of that virus and then it's going to create a cascade of inflammation and then we're going to get rid of the virus. Okay, so now that you understand this, what is the ANA? So ANA is basically an antibody that's made, uh, like that's our own nuclear antibody, right? So basically, it's made of components. It's created against components of our own cells. And it can be the first sign that you have an autoimmune disorder. The ANA by itself cannot really tell us of an, like a, specific, um, a specific immune disease. But really what we want to see is once we have this positive ANA, is it like, do you have lupus? Do you have scleroderma? Do you have Sjogren? Do you have even rheumatoid arthritis and so on? The thing though with this ANA is that it can actually be positive in much more cases than you would think. All right. So before I'm going to explain when it can be positive, when it can be false positive, I want to share with you how we test it so you understand what those titers mean and you understand what those speckled, homogeneous, all of this means. So when we do a test, there's two types of testing. There's one with immunofluorescence. That is the best. But there's another one that's much cheaper. That's with ELISA. And that's basically it's called the direct test. If you have a positive ANA with a direct test, the only thing I want you to know is that you should repeat it with an immunofluorescence test so that you know how much you have, if it's positive, like, is it really positive? 
And then what type it is, like speckled, homogeneous, uh, ribo uh, ribosomic, and all this, right? Um, so I wonder if I can share my screen. I don't think, oh, yes, I might. I might be able to share my screen. So um, give me one second because I'm going to, I really want to share my screen. Um, if I can. <laughs> uh, -da -da, here. Oh, no. Okay. I thought it was here. I might not be able to share my screen, guys. I'm so sorry if that's the case. And that's, you know, I'm learning about all of those as we go. Um, but the good the good news is that uh, uh, I'll, I'll just get better with time. So I'm sorry. Well, so I'm going to try to do it with this and this. Okay. So when uh, when we check the, the ANA, the way we do it is that we take some blood from you. We put it in a tube. So imagine the tube right there. And then we're going to put a reagent there. And then we look and we see if you have, um, if that blood has or not reacted. And then once that is uh, uh, done, if we see that it has reacted and it's positive, we're going to then say, okay, well, it's positive at a dilution of 1 over 20, 1 over 40. And then we're going to dilute it double, right? So we're going to take this, like the blood that's, you know, this, and then we're going to flush it out again, uh, double. And then we're going to see if it's positive. And again, we're going to say, okay, well, it's still positive at 1 over 80. And we're going to say, okay, well, I'm going to take this and I'm going to flush it again another time. So now we are at 1 over 160. At 1 over 160, if it's positive, we flush it again and we look and we're like at 1 over 320. And then we're going to flush it again if it's still positive and we're going to go to 1 over 640. And so what you're hearing now is that it's not going crazy a month when we go from 80 to 160, or when we go to from 160 to 320, you then realize that it's not a huge amount. It's literally we went from one dilution to the next one. And very often I'll have patients who are like, oh my gosh, we checked my ANA. I went from 160 uh, to uh, 320. I'm really scared. It's such a big jump. And I'm like, no, it's only one dilution more. And 1 over 320 to 1 over 640 sounds like a huge jump, but it's really just one more dilution. So that is like the number one thing that I want you to know because that's really, really important. The other thing is to realize that 1 over 80 is, you know, it's really not a lot. A lot of people can have this positive ANA at 1 over 80, and it doesn't really necessarily mean much. And so, so for some labs, they like, or for some rheumatologists, we only necessarily look at the positive ANA if it's more than one over, you know, 160. Uh, we don't necessarily have to uh, worry at one over 80 or one over 40. Like, if you have one over 40, you probably are safe. But this is when the next step comes in. So, right, so we've looked at how you know, diluted your ANA is. So one, do you have an ANA? And two, how diluted is it? And then the second is what type of ANA it is. So this is what I wanted to show you. You know what, you can go, I have a blog on what is ANA and you can show there is this um, picture of four types of ANA and how they look. So just, just go there or I can just even share uh, the presentation so you can, you know, have those pictures. But basically, once you have the ANA that's positive and you, you're looking at how uh, positive it is, you then have um, the laboratory person is going to look under the microscope and it's going to look at where the immunofluorescence is taking. So where this ANA is picking up the immunofluorescence. And so what we, are, uh, we have is that we have different type of ANA. And the one that we usually say is it's the most common it's the homogeneous because it's like all the cell, all over the cell is positive and it's picking up the immunofluorescence. So you see like this green light, beautiful, uh, all over the cell. And that's the positive ANA homogeneous. If you have a positive ANA that's homogeneous at 1 over 40, 1 over 80, you're probably fine if you have no symptoms of autoimmune disorder. If you have a positive ANA 
that's even at a low titer, but you have something called speckled. So speckled literally is just seeing speckled uh, things uh, on the cell. So we see like little dots of white or that you have it nuclear. So we see the nucleus that's, you know, picking up uh, or cytoplasmic, you see the cytoplasms that's, you know, picking up. Those are usually more considered more uh, pathogenic. So like they, they can be associated with autoimmune. So those are like really like when a rheumatologist is looking at the positive ANA, it's one, what's the titer? And two, what type of uh, ANA it is. Okay, so now you understand what a titer of 1 over 40, 1 over 80, 1 over 160, 1 over 320, like what all, all of this means. And now you also know the, the different type, what that means too. And then we go to the next step. And this is really important. If you do have a positive ANA and you have symptoms of an autoimmune disorder, uh, then we need to address what that is and then treat you, right? And the next step, once you have this positive ANA and that it actually is a positive ANA, is to do a second test, which is going to basically look at different types of other autoantibodies. When you come and see a rheumatologist, the vast majority of time, we will not just check the ANA. We're going to check the ANA, but we could also check if you have joint pain, the rheumatoid factor, the CCP. If you have uh, like symptoms of lupus, we'll check a Smith, a DSDNA, we'll check the C3, the C4. If you have symptoms of scleroderma, we'll check a RNP, we'll check a SCL70. So we have specific antibodies for all of those different uh, conditions, okay? In general, you shouldn't have a positive ANA a negative ANA, if you have a positive, like those are other ones are positive, except for rheumatoid factor and CCP and SSA, SSB. SSA, SSB can be positive with a negative ANA. That's really important. Uh, you can have Sjogren with a negative ANA, okay? So that's really important. But otherwise, we shouldn't see lupus if you have a negative ANA. We shouldn't see uh, uh, scleroderma, if you have a negative ANA, we shouldn't see a mixed connective tissue disorder if you have a negative ANA. Like everything in medicine, things happen. We do find some patients have lupus and they have a negative ANA. That does happen. So it's not like 100%. However, in general, in the vast majority of time, if your symptoms are not like obvious uh, and if you have a negative ANA, then I would consider that most likely you don't have some of those autoimmune disorders we were talking about. Now, the reason why you may have a positive ANA, okay, and that it doesn't mean that you have an autoimmune disorder, so this is like really important. Number one, infection. Infections can cause positive ANA. It's simple, like it's logical, right? If you have an ongoing infection, your immune system is triggered to get rid of that infection because it's triggered it's going to recognize more stuff and it might make an antibody uh, an ANA okay so that that is what it is right uh, so HIV common EBV common uh, um, FC common so that can, like those are those are the ones that we would recommend that you check anyway if you have a positive ANA that's high and then old age. Uh, the old age is actually quite interesting because your immune system is not as good. It's not as efficient. And so that comes with the just not being in balance. It's going to make more antibodies. That doesn't necessarily mean much. Um, and so you have to take it with a grain of salt. Um, I would say if I have a patient that has a bunch of antibodies and it just makes no sense and she's, you know, I'm saying she, but I could, they are losing weight and they just feels unright, I'm going to look for cancer because that is also a possibility. If you have a high ANA, but no really evidence of an autoantibody, like an, um, an autoimmune disorder, then that's what I'm going to, you know, look at uh, cancer. So make sure that all the cancer screening are up to date. Um, and then, in general, drugs, uh, so when I say drugs, like medication can cause a positive ANA. What's really interesting in all of those, like the infection, the drugs, or um, the cancer is that 
they can trigger positive RNA. What you have to know is that it can actually trigger an actual autoimmune response. Uh, so sometimes you will have what we call a paraneoplastic syndrome. It's like you have a cancer and you have also some sort of autoimmune process. You treat the cancer, you're treating the autoimmune process. So it's not like, oh, it's a false ANA. It's literally your, it's just your body is making something up. And does it make, like, does it mean that you actually have an autoimmune disease? Yes or no? That's really the question. Okay. I think that, you know, I went over the usual 10 minutes that I want to do. Um, I hope you enjoy this presentation. There's a lot. I try to pack it really condensely. Normally, at the end of uh, those 15 minutes, you've learned what is a positive, like what is an ANA, what it means to have a positive ANA, what it means to have different titers, and the type of titers, and how not all positive ANA mean that you have an autoimmune disorder. And remember, the same thing ap applies. Not all negative ANA means that you have no autoimmune disorder. Negative rheumatoid factor and negative CCP doesn't mean that you don't have a rheumatoid arthritis. Negative ANA doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have an autoimmune disorder. It's just it's just a tool. It's just a tool. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing no questions today, but you know you can listen to this if you're watching this after uh, hashtag replay. And then if you have a question, don't hesitate, write it. And then I will answer to the best of uh, my ability. Have a wonderful uh, week. I'll see you next week. And again, this is Dr. Amy from On Average MD. And I'm your friendly rheumatologist. Take care. Bye-bye. How do I start?